Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the Ask Video Mail for the week of February, February, February 16th, 2015. Welcome to the site to you new members and welcome back to the old members. The Ask Video Mail is your chance. Get your question in character animation or performance answered in a video just like this one. It doesn't even have to be about those two things. It can be about anything. Ask me what color socks I'm wearing and I might answer it one week. Who knows? Uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Believe me. And it is the best way to get the most out of the site. This is the address to send it to. I like to mix it up sometimes. Doing the same intro every single time is driving me nuts. Uh, that's the address. Send it to there. I'll go through it and answer the ones that I think will help the most people. And uh, it's the best way to get the most out of the site. Guys, guys, it is, it is February for reals. And I, I know I was late posting the Anim Gym topic this month, but go over to the Anim Gym right now. If you don't know what the Anim Gym is and you are a member of KennyWally.com, it is probably the most valuable resource uh, that you can take advantage of uh, for free as part of your subscription right now. You can get a critique from me for... Uh, just participating in the Anim Gym, just two or three seconds, two to three seconds, 48 to 72 frames of an animation test that we design and we all do together. I, I've had emails, requests from people asking me if I could critique their work. And I say, I do not have the time to critique everybody's work who just comes to me and, and wants me to look at their stuff. But if you're a member, you can do the Anim Gym. And think about it. As part of your membership, you get all these videos, all the weekly content, all the monthly lectures, all of these uh, example scene files and, and, and the uh, support of the forums, plus you get a professional critique at the end of the month. And all you have to do is add two seconds, two seconds of animation on top of what you're already doing. And I, I imagine, I don't want to be too hard on you, but I imagine if you are really serious about getting better at animation, adding two seconds to what you're already doing, uh, it really should be nothing for you guys. So please take advantage of the Anim Gym. I want more than one entry. There's been one entry for the past two months and I, I'm not happy with that, okay? So let's, let's, let's get to work, all right? Let's do it. Check out this week's question. I'm glad you asked that, man. I, I want to do every once in a while a few um, ask video mails like this one that um, are a little bit more of the business of animation. Uh, I get sometimes emails from people that say that, hey, I have this freelance gig. Will you will you um, take a look at it? Will you help me you know, talk to the client? Um, sometimes people want to uh, just have me, my studio, do the, you know, take over the, you know, the business aspect and they just want to animate on it. That happens quite frequently frequently as well um, and by the way uh, maybe I should have mentioned this before if you ha if you have anything like that and you want to you know somebody comes with a freelance project but it's like stuff that you don't know how to do like you know it needs everything from boards to modeling and rigging and whatever and you just want to animate on that I do offer a sales commission um, that's just given right to people who bring a project that gets awarded at Arconix and you also I would obviously hire you as as an animator on the project as well so you're kind of sort of earning double duty on that um, I just wanted to mention that by the way um, so you guys know about it um, but uh, I, I feel like, so the way that the industry is going is more and more people getting into animation, more and more people want animation as part of their content. If they're doing advertising or if they're, um, wh wherever it can go, basically, wherever multimedia is, is used, they want animation because it's becoming cheaper and faster to produce. A lot of people like you guys know how to do it and uh, you can, you know, basically work from anywhere. You just need your computer at home is, is power no powerful enough to, to do all this stuff. So what's the point? <clears throat> point is, is that you should also be starting to think of yourself as a business person a businessman or woman and the, and the and the 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 talent of sort of like 
vouching for your, your yourself, you know, going to going to uh, bat for you know protecting your work and all this stuff. Um, it's a skill. So I'm going to run through some of the things. Um, this is this wasn't a general question. This was a very specific question about like when to send feedback and how to charge for for overages. But I'm going to run through a few of the things that you should know if you're going to be doing any freelance work. First thing is is get a standard contract. Just get something that says this is uh, that you can reuse. It says basically this is the scope of the work. This defines how much work we're doing and for what price. Then get a schedule. Very rough schedule and it, it doesn't have to be super super detailed. The more detailed the better because there's going to be a, a moment when um, uh, what comes up is that a, a disagreement on deliveries uh, is going to withhold payment. Part of that schedule should have a payment schedule as well <clears throat> and use this terminology. This is a big one. In the schedule, use the terminology when you, when that delivery happens. It's the delivery on payment. So especially the last one. Some clients don't like to do this for, for progress deliveries, but for especially for your final delivery, you can show them everything that is finished, final, perfect, beautiful, but it needs to have some way that they cannot use it until they pay. So if it's like if it's a final render, if you're rendering everything, it should have a watermark on it. All right, and it just says property of Arconics Animation Studios because they haven't paid for it yet. They don't own it, okay? They haven't paid for it yet. So you show it to them and they say like, yeah, that's, a, that's approved, that's great. Can you send it to us without the watermark? You say, yes, I'm very happy to, um, according to our, our contract and the schedule, payment is due on this date and I will release it the moment that I see that the uh, payment has cleared or I receive a check in hand. Um, so, so there you go. And actually, a lot of times, I've I've actually received checks that have that have bounced. So actually, deposit it, and if you want them, if they are like, well, it's going to take two days to clear or whatever it is, say, well, then send me a cashier's check. If you want, if I'll I'll, I'll uh, release it the moment I get a cashier's check in hand. And the fastest way is actually to wire. So if they're not willing to wire, well, anyway, you start getting the uh, uh, the picture here. Um, if I had to add up all the money that I'm owed as a company, it would be it would be six figures. So there are a lot of people out there who start projects and can't pay it, and and you get into a lot of trouble. And that shouldn't fall on you. You shouldn't get in trouble because a, a, a client can't pay. So a contract with a schedule that's not just the deliveries but the payment schedule. Never give them anything that's final unless you've been paid for it. Um, and then past that, really it needs to come down to the amount of communication that you have with your client and have them acknowledge in writing. So basically email is sufficient for this. Acknowledge in writing what they've received and what it corresponds to in the agreement you have. So to answer this um, question specifically, if your if your audience, if your client is asking for change after change after change after change, you just point to the contract that says there will be three rounds of notes, okay? And then when you're talking to your client, you can tell them a round of notes is basically you get all of the feedback that you can possibly think of into you know, you know, in, in response to work that we send. And when you're done that and when you've given us all of your ideas, that's considered a round. Okay? So we're not going to work incrementally on it. We're going to work on, you know, you're going to send us a list of all the changes and fixes that you want. And that's going to be together in aggregate, that is a round of notes. And then we're going to work on all of that. And when all of that has been addressed, we're going to send you the new version. Now, if there is something that is that is undeniably, and this is where you start getting into a little bit of problems, but normally if you're working with good people, it, it's okay. But you say if there's something that is undeniably not addressed from the previous version, and that means not addressed, like we missed the note. Not we didn't do it to your satisfaction, but we actually like forgot to do it or it's, or it's been left out. Then that can still be um, uh, 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 done. But the moment you have more feedback, then it's a new round of notes. So I normally say three rounds of notes and, and that's it. And normally what the problem is, is that people that you're going to uh, encounter are going to be new to animation themselves. And why that's a problem is because they don't understand that the difference between uh, 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 something that is subjective 
and something that is objective is that the subjectivity means that they are putting uh, many decisions into your hands. In other words, when they, if they, normally they're so afraid that they still won't be happy with what they get after three rounds of notes. They're like, well, what if it still doesn't look like what I want? Then what you have to explain is, and maybe a good thing to do is to talk to them ahead of time and say, this is how this works. We have three rounds of notes, and we are professional, and you've seen our previous work, and I stand behind what we do. All right? And there's a little bit of wiggle room there, just a little bit, um, and we can have a person-to-person -person conversation about that kind of thing, but we're going to stick to the three rounds of notes, and here's, here's where you're going to have to make the decision before you hire us. Based on our previous work based on what you've seen on the reel and and the conversations we're having you need to know and trust that by the end of those three rounds of notes we're going to have something that is worth your money all right your payment does not buy our studio for the duration of of your project okay your payment actually pays for us to spend an allotted amount of time of our expertise doing the best we can with your with your uh, you know your creative uh, uh, direction your 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 kickoff point and then you're putting it in our hands so if you're terrified that we're not going to be able to produce something that you see as satisfactory in your head for your money then you need to go somewhere where you're not you're not scared that you're not going to get that. And where would you not be scared that you're going to get that? You wouldn't be scared of Pixar, would you, right? But they cost a million dollars per minute of animation. A million dollars per minute. And you're coming to me with your budget, which is probably a thousandth of that. So, you know, do the math, all right? So... Um, and I, I tell this in some some format. I, I say this to every single person that comes into my studio. I, I, I tell them the rounds of notes are not designed to just conveniently section like the emails or, or just, you know, separate all of the thoughts that you're having. The rounds of notes are strict. And we adhere to them as our, uh, our, our collective creative and technical input improving and and directing your project through our pipeline as best as we can in the amount of time that we have for for, for the budget that you've given us all right so uh, uh, that's the most important thing that you need to establish so to, I guess to answer this specific question what happens when they keep on coming back and back and back and back easiest thing in the world to, to, to squash that if you have had the conversation like I just did with them, what you say is, it, it, in the email, you don't do this on the phone, you, in the email you say, um, we, um, uh, we've received these notes, we're going to add these to, like let's say you've already gone through one round of notes and you've sent it again and then they just start sending changes and, and, and fixes and, and, and whatever. You say, all right, we're going to add these to the second round of notes. All right, and we need to collect all notes by whatever this date in order to um, get it done before the third delivery milestone. All right, so please um, let me know when you have had all your thoughts and you've shown it to all the people that you need to to collect the feedback that we need to to move into the last round of notes. And what they start realizing is when you do that, huh? I can't just keep on sending emails with like ideas and changes and fixes because I'm burning through my rounds of notes. And at, at, with some people who you're comfortable with, like I have a client that I, that's been with my studio since the very beginning, okay? So this is our eighth year. They, they came in in our first year. So I've been with this client for seven years and I can, I can be um, frank enough and, and blunt enough with this client when they send like a just like an offhand email or whatever sometimes i just say like is this your is this your entire third round of notes like wink and they're like oh, no, no no hold off on this that was just a that was just an idea um let me wait until network sees it or let me see, wait until whatever so every once in a while they'll try to you know try to get like a little bit of extra work on on, on the project but 
I, I, I say like, you know, if this is all you want, then okay, there you go. All right. So you got to make them aware that they have a role to play. Um, another way to talk to them to make them feel like they have a role to play is talk to them about their role. You say up front, right in the beginning of the project, our role is to take your kickoff, your, your creative vision and um, execute it. Okay. And along the way, your role is to redirect, help us realize where we're supposed to be uh, focusing our efforts, and your role is also to, to finance this thing. You have to pay on time. That's part of your job, okay? So that we can all together, I can pay my people and you can get what you want, okay? So all together, we all have a role, role to play, okay? So if you're, if you're frank with them, and, and, and right, right up from the beginning, you, you just you outline what everybody's roles are. When they start firing off emails like, oh, change this, and then you're like, oh, maybe I should get started working on that. And then the next day they're like, oh, I don't know, change this as well or whatever. You, you, you squash that by saying like, listen, I really need you to play the role of, of uh, producer or, or, or you know, creator here and, and organize all of the feedback and deliver that feedback to us in the form of one round of notes, which we will execute and we will we will pound out and show you. And then you have you have two more rounds after that. You have plenty of time to get that feedback in. Um, and you hired us with, with the trust that we're going to get to some place where where you want to be. Okay, and. And then it's up to you. Then it's up to you to animate the, the crap out of it or what, whatever it is. It's up to you to actually deliver on your, on your promises. And I think that because of the way that things are going, there's more people that are getting into animation. I mean like content developers or like advertisers and like, and like small things. Like I have students that send me emails at like this like local ad agency or this local business wants to do their own commercial or they want their own animated character or they want whatever. And... People are getting into it because it's so like animation so prevalent. They feel like they're not they're not even you know doing their due diligence. They're not even playing the right game if they don't have like some animation in in their marketing materials. Um, and they're partly right. So there's so many um, new new players, newcomers to the animation like world, and they're small time. And so they're going to be looking for small freelancers. So I, I think. Um, more and more and more a role that animators are going to play is going to be like you know small studio or like freelance animator um, just like I keep on saying like everyone when they get into animation you have the lofty goal and it's fine to have that goal of going to Pixar or going to DreamWorks or Disney or whatever that's that's all fine but realistically if you're going to incarnate as an animator on planet earth more than likely you're going to be working in advertising uh, games and then visual effects serials episodics for TV um, and then finally you start getting into feature film VFX and then the smallest um, section is feature animation. All right. So anyway, um, a bigger and bigger over the next, you know, I would say like five to 10 years, we're going to see a, a much bigger chunk growing. The fastest is freelance animators doing stuff like locally um, for, for small ad agencies and for local businesses. So think about it. And if you have any questions regarding like anything I said, um, especially how to talk to a client, or if you want me to talk to a client for you and, and just establish and just help you set up an understanding, I am more than happy to do that. I love the deal. I love wheeling and dealing. I love talking to people, getting people on board and starting projects. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun for me. So um, please reach out if you have a, a, a situation like that. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Like I said, I think this is this part of the animation industry is growing, so we're going to be talking a little bit more of that. So um, I'm excited. Thanks for this question. And uh, just a small personal note, I actually misplaced about 30 of this animator, Andre's uh, uh, um, questions. So I'm going to be doing a few of his for the next couple weeks because like I, 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 I'm sorry I misplaced them and now I have them all and some of them are really great so I'm going to uh, answer those so if it looks like the Andres show uh, that's that's why it is so thanks a lot I'm Kenny Roy good luck with the animation as always rock on